if someone you know leaves a comment saying slut or whatever or people I know call me terrible names I've sort of I guess just learnt to accept that and feel if anything sorry for them that they feel the need to come out and put a woman down for how she chooses to dress or express herself. <laughs> I'm Karina Utomo and I'm here at the White Space Studio in Fitzroy to meet with model and activist Stefania Ferrario for this episode of Broadly Meets. With a single post on Instagram, Canberra model and activist Stefania Ferrario reignited the worldwide debate over the fashion industry's distorted perception of the female body and lack of visible diversity. Ferrario's Drop the Plus campaign is a movement calling on the fashion, media and retail sectors to stop using the disempowering and damaging label Plus Size. We caught up with Stefania, face of Dita Von Teese lingerie, ahead of her departure to New York City. Let's jump straight into the Drop the Plus campaign. That now very iconic photo of you with I am a model, full stop. my boobs. Can you tell us a little bit about what compelled you to start that movement? I had this image in my head of writing I'm a model on my chest that just came to me and I thought, that's it, I'm going to post something tonight. I'm going to write about it. I thought people would get passionate about it, but I never expected it to go beyond my followers and reach every major media outlet. The main mission behind it is to drop the plus size label for fashion and retail stores to follow suit as well by dropping the label in their stores and for the media to no longer report on plus size models, just on models. Can you tell us a little bit about that online debate that you had? News.com posted a big article about Laura Wells plus size model is in this new campaign and I thought why are they picking her out and labelling her as plus size when she she looks just like an average woman. AJ Rochester commented on the fact that they shouldn't have been using it and she got a lot of hatred for saying that this model shouldn't be labelled as plus size and people just totally misunderstood her, attacked her, bullied her and I thought this is so wrong. I decided to finally voice my opinion as well on the label and also support what AJ was saying and sort of clarified the point she was making and then people got it. It takes a lot of guts to kind of interject in these like online debates. They can get really heated, there can be a lot of hate, they can, you, you don't know what's gonna happen. But I just saw something that I thought was wrong and this needed to stop. Let's talk about the label plus size. Well, plus size implies bigger than normal. Plus size category starts with anything above a US size four. And in Australia, that's anything above an Australian size eight. So all those women are then classified as abnormal psychologically can affect the minds of young girls that look towards the fashion industry for inf inspiration and they see these models that are their size labeled as plus size and I have seen comments on social media saying things like how can she be plus size I mean if she's plus size what does that make me in terms of ethnic re representation age representation as well why do you think that having that visibility is so important from personal experience, I know growing up, I would look for models that would be my size or would represent me and they wouldn't. So I can imagine what it would be like um, looking for models that are the same ethnicity as you or the same age as you and not being able to see that within the industry and feeling like you're not beautiful because you can't see anything that you can relate to. And I would love to see more and more models catering to these audiences of women that are otherwise forgotten. Stefania, you've been modelling since you were 16. I'm really interested to hear about your journey up until this point because you've shared in the past that you know you weren't always comfortable with your body. Yes I've gone through periods where I felt so uncomfortable and so outside the norm. I struggled with I guess eating disorders and trying to love my body. When I was 16 I weighed almost 20 kilos less than I do now and I was still told that I was not slim enough that I still need to lose several kilos to be considered a model. I hit puberty, my hips grew, I started to fill out more. That as well was really, really hard because all of a sudden I was this different person, I had a different body shape. People just have this idea that there is a model body and there is no model body, there are bodies. When you first started modelling, can you tell us about any horror stories and incredible stories as well. Going on shoots and being, you know, a bit curvier than the other models, I was often made to feel a bit like 
a gimmick and not taken as seriously, not just by the designers or the stylists on set, but other models as well, making sly comments about my weight or the fact that the clothing's a bit tight. It did get to me, it is quite upsetting. Stefania Raw, tell me a little bit about why you started that account. Often I feel more comfortable in the nude or wearing sort of fetish gear or lingerie than I do entirely clothed. And I love to be able to express it. And so Stefania Raw was born. <laughs> I have lost jobs because of the sorts of shots I've taken and the way I express myself. I had a job lined up earlier this year and they discovered my Stefania Raw page and went, we're not using her anymore, we're dropping her. How does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel pretty shit because that's who I am. You know, we're surrounded by sexual images, but as soon as a woman decides to sexualize herself, she's shunned upon. Sometimes I get people saying, oh, you know, you're such a beautiful girl. Why do you have to take your clothes off? Why do you have to do images like this? And I just think... Why do you have to say anything? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> do you have to have an opinion? <laughs> Sorry. I don't have to, but I feel like it. I just should be able to do it and not get slut shamed, especially by other women. More often than not, it's by other women. And I had an incident um, recently with someone I actually knew. She had a daughter who I think was about five at the time and she called me a slut in front of her daughter. And I just think, how can we be teaching our daughters and other women to treat women like this? It's also women calling other women sluts. Men see that and they think, oh, well, I can call another woman a slut too. And it just feeds the cycle and it's just ongoing. Really exciting, at the start of the year, I woke up to a post from Amber Rose and she had posted a picture of me and she had written woman crush every day. And when I saw that, I just thought, oh, that's amazing. And once again, it was something else that just inspires me and keeps me going and makes me feel like, hey, what I'm doing, there's nothing wrong with it. That sounds like it's a, it's a pretty important outlet for you to express yourself. Many times I've thought, oh, you know, I should take it down because I'm probably losing opportunities and future jobs. But then I think, do I even want to work for clients that want me to look and be a certain way? Maybe I want clients that want someone like that. You know, I want the interesting clients. So yeah, I've come to the point where I think, I'll keep it up, it's liberating. Why just show one aspect of my life? Why not show all of it? And you know, sexuality is a big part of it. So why hide that?